It's time to certify, develop, connect, and advocate. So let's talk small business with the Georgia Minority Supplier Development Council and your host, Stacy Key. Hi, this is Stacy Key with this edition of Let's Talk Small Business. This is Energy Efficiency Month, and as with seasons are changing, it's the perfect time to have our partner with us, Georgia Power. With us today is Monica Pearson and Eric Swan of Georgia Power. When we come back, they're going to be talking to us about all the unique and exciting things they have going on at Georgia Power and the how they can help us be more energy efficient throughout the rest of the year. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with this edition of Let's Talk Small Business. If every marching band play my song And every choir sing along Then maybe we can, maybe we can change the world Let's Talk Small Business is brought to you by Georgia Power, a Southern Company, AT&T, Wells Fargo, and the Cox family of companies. At Georgia Power, we're here to help. On the phone, 24-7. And in local offices. You can manage your account online, too. Sign up for free outage alerts so you can plan ahead. Find energy efficiency programs to help reduce your bill. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Or use our app so you can manage your account on the go. At Georgia Power, we're here. And here. And here. And here. For you. We're back with our friends from Georgia Power. It's Energy Efficiency Month, and they're going to be sharing with us some of the tips and techniques that Georgia Power can help us with our energy efficiency. So first, we've got Monica Pearson. Welcome back to this edition of Let's Talk Small Business. Thank you so much for having me. And we've got Eric Swan of Georgia Power as well. Eric, welcome. Thank you for having me. Glad to so be here. So you guys have been busy this month. We've had a change of season. Everyone's now focused on energy efficiency. And so you two should be really busy right now. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. We stay busy. We save you stay busy. And so with Energy Efficiency Month, first of all, before we jump into that, I want to hear a little bit about both of your backgrounds, what you do at Georgia Power, and how you work in this energy efficiency space. So, Mr. Swan, let's start with you. Sure. So I've been with Georgia Power for close to 19 years. I've had various jobs in what we call sales, marketing, customer service. I currently work in our commercial energy efficiency program department. Commercial Um, being uh, not residential, just business commercial? Correct. Okay, excellent. So that could be small, medium, large business customers that we classify as commercial. So in other words... Um, retail spaces, office buildings, schools, churches, um, it runs the gamut as far as what we consider commercial. That is the area that I work with on is helping them find opportunities to uh, save energy, save money, and get rebates back in the process through our commercial energy efficiency program. Excellent. We've got a lot of small businesses that we're looking forward to hearing what exactly you have to say. And Monica, tell us about your role at Georgia Power. All right. Well, thanks for having me again. I've been at Georgia Power for about 16 years um, in the energy systems team. And what we focus on is doing uh, providing energy audits for our small, medium, and large uh, commercial and industrial customers, as a matter of fact. And uh, what we're looking for are opportunities, ways for customers to save energy. If they're looking at doing any type of upgrades, we want to help them do an analysis on that. We're there to give them that support to help them with their bottom line and also just to be more efficient. Excellent. And so, again, the season is changing now for us. And so with that change, you know, in fact, you think you start thinking of efficiency. You're out of the summer months. And so as small businesses, what are some of the the, the unique tips that you might give them in terms of looking to be more efficient, to save money? Again, that money drops into their bottom line. So anything that we can help them with, it just improves their profitability. What are some of the quick tips that they might consider in terms of energy efficiency? Okay, I'll take that one since I tend to do the audits quite frequently. Um, Usually we're looking for things such as how they're operating their facility. So things in the commercial building, you're going to look at our HVAC systems, which is your heating and air conditioning system. How, what kind of units you have? How are you controlling it? Do you have programmable thermostats? Do you have? Are you manually controlling those? Also, we're looking at lighting. What kind of lighting do you have? Do you have the most efficient lighting? Are you controlling that with a light switch or occupancy sensors? Um, it can run the gamut to anything from compressed air or 
um, sometimes buildings might have chillers or boilers. We're looking at the entire system, just trying to find out ways that they can be more efficient. Once we look at that, we'll give them some suggestions. For example, put in an occupancy sensor so that your lights will go off automatically or put in a programmable thermostat. That way your heating and air won't be cooling or heating when you're not in the space. Those are some really great uh, tips that we like to give, our, especially our smaller customers, because those are the things that most affect them. And those things, can, can they, can, they can see those benefits right away. That's right. I know there's a lot going on with the lighting area when it talks about there's they're switching out with the bulbs and there's a lot of things going on in the lighting. Talk a little bit about what's going on with the, with the lighting piece of it. You want to start with that? Yeah, I'll start with the type and then we'll lead into the rebates. Mm -hmm. um, with lighting, um, one of the biggest things, and it's not a new technology, LED lighting has become the key uh, fixture type that most customers are looking to move to. LEDs have been around for years, but the costs have come down considerably, so it makes them a lot more affordable, makes the payback a lot better. Um, LEDs, the wattage that it um, that it uh, uh, pro provides to the customer is a lot less than a fluorescent or an incandescent or anything else that a customer might, customer might have. So we see a lot of customers leaning towards the LED technology. There's a lot more options out there. So we're heading that way, giving some cost analysis on that, and then that leads into what we can provide as far as rebates. Ooh, always, uh, rebates are always nice. And we're glad to give them away, which oh. surprises a lot of customers. So. On the lighting side, you bring that up, and that is probably the most, well, easily the most popular um, area of participation in terms of our commercial energy efficiency program. We do see a lot of applications. We do approve a lot of applications tied to lighting, LED being very popular, and we are seeing a, a large number of applications that include um, LED fixtures. They may be screw-in bulbs. It could be interior, exterior, wall packs, parking lot lighting. The opportunities uh, run the gamut, and we are definitely allowing our commercial customers, our small business customers, to take advantage of getting those rebates. So we do partner a good bit with Monica's team where they may be going in to actually do the walkthrough of the facility with the customer, and then if they make the improvements on the back end, we are glad to pay them a rebate for the measures that they have implemented. Excellent. I think rebates and saving money. That is always exciting. And I tell you, and our small businesses, again, are looking uh, for ways to drive additional profitability to the bottom line. When we come back from our break, we're going to talk about the checklist or if there's a checklist or audit or some things that businesses can do to go down that list to make sure they're maximizing the potential savings they can around energy efficiency and the rebates, because I think both of those things tied together are a powerful combination uh, for them in saving monies. Growth is an inherent part of any successful business. As your business grows, expanding the reach of your network becomes more critical and more complicated. The problem is, the global IT infrastructure can be a patchwork of different platforms and architectures with varying degrees of quality, security, and reliability. How can you expand your network's reach without exposing your global operations to risk? To achieve this, Today's agile businesses are employing comprehensive threat intelligence solutions across networks and gateways to protect, detect, and correct. By turning to a robust network security solution, you'll be able to safely extend your network to global suppliers, partners, and customers. This will enable your business to quickly seize expansion opportunities while minimizing security risk so you can be open to growth and secure from threats all at the same time. We're back with Monica and Erica Georgia Power talking about rebates and energy efficiency and how you can drive profitability to your bottom line. So we had ta started the discussion around the rebates that are, that are being offered. And so, so Monica and Eric, I want to explore is there a checklist? Is there an audit? How do small businesses really go start this process? They're going to listen to you and they're going to get excited and they're going to say, okay, I want to, I want to participate. I want to figure out how my business can save money. Where do they go from there? What, what's the process? How do they get started? Well, for us on the rebate side, I would say it could start in a number of ways. It, it starts with them being committed to doing the work. Um, if they uh, want to make the investment to install the equipment, the improvement measures, then that kind of gets the ball rolling. They may be working with a contractor that is a trade ally for our rebate program. 
where that trade ally would be knowledgeable, would be aware of what the rebate opportunities are in working with that small business customer. We also have information available on our website. They can go to uh, georgepower.com forward slash commercial savings and find out more information on the rebate offerings that are available and actually submit their application online. And uh, there's also a call center where they can call. Uh, we have staff that's out in the field. We work with a contractor that helps implement our program and they have personnel that can meet with customers to help them identify opportunities up front, make sure that the equipment that they're looking to put in actually qualifies for our program, and then assist them through the application process to where they can get that rebate on the back end. So we have a number of different ways that we can engage with customers to make sure that they can take advantage of our program. Let me applaud Georgia Power because, again, you've got resources that can, you've identified to work with our small businesses. You've got a website. You've got a call center. You've got multiple avenues for getting information to our, our business owners, which I applaud you for that. So I've got all these avenues to get information. And so I'm assuming there's a checklist or something for me to go down and start looking at ways my particular business can customize my savings and my solution for energy efficiency. Is that correct? Well, yes. Um, typically, once customers have, um, once they go online and take a look at what all different types of opportunities out there, they'll see some things right off the bat that they can maybe start identifying. Um, to, if they want to call us, the, the the call center can get them in touch with us or someone at the company, someone off my team that will call and talk with them and just start figuring out what they exactly have. So there is a checklist we talked about, right? Yes. So talk a little bit about that checklist. Because Eric said you got to be committed to doing the work. That's right. Now that that's a that's that's a buzz for me, mm -hmm. and that committed to doing the work because many business owners don't have the time or the resources. And so when I hear work, is that is that an hour? Is that two hours? Is that two weeks? So talk about the checklist and the commitment of time that it takes to see these savings. The checklist starts with identifying the technology in the facility. We're going to look at have them go and look at what type of lights they have in their facility. Is it what kind? Is it the most efficient? How are they operating those lights? Look at what kind of switches they have. That next checklist, once they go through all of the different technologies that they have in that facility, um, and that audit may take an hour, a couple of hours at the most. If we'll need them to be dedicated to give us someone who can walk through and help us to identify those things in their facility, how they're operating those particular things, then we're gonna give you something to help you try to figure out what to do. And then you can go from there to go in and start replacing it, working with um, our energy efficiency program managers so that they're getting the right technology in so that it qualifies for the rebate program. And then once they've made that change and in installed the equipment, then it moves on to the rebate program. And so part of what I'm hearing as well, you've got to make put the time in. You're going to have to develop a budget of some sort uh, and, and prioritize that budget of, of what is important to change first and what is the impact of that change in terms of my energy efficiency? Because that's going to dictate the savings. Is that correct? Is there any kind of tool to kind of help some of our business owners with that piece of it? Well, as far as on um, online tool, I'm not typically we use our own calculators and and our own um, tools that we have to help customers evaluate those paybacks. Okay. That's so kind you, of what you you're work talking hand about. in hand. It's yes. a partnership with Georgia that's Power exactly correct. to help, which is which is incredible. That's the right. commitment you've made to helping. Uh, businesses and, and residential as well in terms of their energy efficiency. So it can help them with the budgeting process because they're going to be sensitive to budgeting. That's important. And then the time involved. And then, as always, we're looking for return on investment, which is the key part of what any business owner is going to be focused on. That's correct. That, absolutely. And that's what our, um, our goal is to give the customers a payback. And so when we come back, we're going to talk about we're going to we're going to delve into incentives to make sure who applies, who is who qualifies for incentives. We're going to talk specifically about the rebates um, and make sure. And then we're going to talk about overall advice and do's and don'ts that you'd recommend for some of our business owners, because we really want uh, them to take advantage of the offerings that are there, be more efficient, be more conscious of what they're consuming and how they really save. And so we'll be right back with Eric and Monica as we continue our discussion around energy efficiency for National Energy Efficiency Month with Georgia Power. I look up to you for all the things you do. I hope to, I hope to be like you. Someday soon. 
working hard for every smile. Another reason why Cox is your friend in the digital age. So we're back with Georgia Power as we celebrate Energy Efficiency Month. We've got Eric and Monica with us as they're sharing some valuable tips and techniques to help you drive profitability to your bottom line. So there's incentives, there are rebates. Who qualifies? How do they get them? And so I'm going to ask for some, you know, at the tail end of that, some do's and don'ts as well. So let's talk about the incentives and the rebates. Everybody qualifies and there are lots of them. Come on, tell me about it. We wish everybody qualified, but um, for our commercial energy efficiency program, and I'll add, we do have residential programs as well, so you did mention that. Um, but uh, our commercial program is strictly for what we classify as commercial customers. George Power puts customers in three classes. Residential would be single family home, town home, apartment, condo, um, a place designed for living. Um, industrial for us is a facility where some sort of manufacturing process takes place. Any other customer is classified for us as commercial. So again, that runs the gamut and it can be retail spaces like barbershops, laundromats, dry cleaners, schools, churches, office buildings, um, you name it, a uh, wide variety, a wide number of customers are eligible for what is our commercial energy efficiency program. So that is the uh, initial qualification, they must be commercial. They must install new high efficient equipment. Um, Can you use stuff? You can't get used stuff? You cannot. It has to be new it equipment. To be new equipment? It has to be new equipment. You know, that you can get some new stuff on the market out there. <laughs> it's got to all be new. Okay. Correct. Okay. And in different categories, there are different requirements. Lighting being one of our most popular categories. Yes. We do ideally like the equipment to either be certified by Energy Star or Design Lights uh. Consortium or Lighting Design Lab if the equipment is on one of those three lists then it more than likely would qualify for our program. So they need to be they need to check the packaging of whatever you're purchasing to make sure it meets one of those criteria. That is correct. Okay. And if they're working with a contractor that is a uh, registered trade ally through our program, then that trade ally know. can guide them through that process Excellent. to ensure Excellent. that the equipment that they're purchasing does qualify. Excellent. And I'll use food service. That's another category where we pay rebates. So that can be things like dishwashers, um, commercial refrigerators, freezers, um, holding cabinets, um, just a wide variety of equipment. That equipment has to typically be Energy Star. So there are requirements that we have, but again, the um, intent of the program is to encourage customers to put in high efficient equipment that ultimately helps them use less energy, save money, and get a rebate back in the process. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, so we, we know who qualifies. We know the rebates. Is there is is there there's rebates in every category out there? Every from we know lighting. The rebates in HVAC. There's uh, what other categories? So we've mentioned lighting. HVAC yes is another category. Uh, we do offer rebates for water heating, food service, grocery, um, reflect, reflective roofing um, is an area that we pay. Um, we also have what we call a custom savings category where everything that I mentioned fits in a nice, neat bucket. But there are other things that customers are doing. There's new technology being introduced that may not be in one of those ni nice, neat buckets. So we allow, through what we call custom savings, customers to bring to us there. Customize your savings? That's, that's pretty oh, much I it. I like that. I like the sound of that, customizing your savings. If they can verify what the energy savings is associated with it and – uh, we can approve that energy savings then through custom savings and those could be things like energy management systems, chiller replacement projects, um, VFDs on motors, just a, a number of opportunities for customers to bring to us their energy savings projects, which hopefully we can improve and pay them a rebate on. Excellent. Um, I like it. And so what are some of the to do's and don'ts, some of the tips you give our small business owners? Because everybody likes the inside track. You guys are prof the ultimate professionals. You know this space, you live and breathe it every single day. So what are the inside tracks, some inside do's and don'ts for our small business owners? Well, I'll start with on the rebate side, check with us before you're doing your project. We can help guide you through okay. not only the process of applying, but making sure that the equipment that you're considering purchasing and installing actually qualifies for our program. So nothing worse to get to the end and find out it doesn't qualify. That is correct. That's a, that's a bad, that is understand. Correct. So again, 
We can be reached through our website. We have a 1-800 call center uh, that customers can call as well as, again, engaging our, engaging our trade allies in the field. We have account managers that work in the field that can work with customers on the front end to make sure that they are doing what's going to qualify for a rebate. So. Excellent. Monica? Yes. The one thing I would like to mention is when customers are evaluating technologies, don't always just assume right off the bat based off of um, what someone or a manufacturer might be telling you about savings, have someone take a look at that and evaluate it from the perspective of what, how it's going to affect their utilities. We know our utility rates better than anyone else, so we can help customers evaluate different technologies and help them look and see how is it really going to affect your bottom line, how is it really going to affect your utility costs every month, because there's so many comp- competitors out there that are trying to compete for business, and we are like a very unbiased party right now. We're wanting to be the here to help you make the best decision for your business. So that would be definitely a, a do call us and don't always just take their word for it because we're excellent, here for you. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> I tell you, Georgia, Georgia Power, I'm a, they, they're, they're a strategic partner in GMSDC, but I am so impressed in all that you're doing to help business owners around this whole energy, energy efficiency space. I applaud you. We'll be right back with Monica and Eric as we continue and wrap up our discussion around energy efficiency. There are so many numbers in our lives. Numbers we try to make bigger. Numbers we try to keep small. Some we celebrate. Some we work toward. At Wells Fargo, we're here, empowering communities, offering wealth-building tools and helping you make the most of your numbers while making sure you never feel like one. Wells Fargo and you, together we'll go far. We're back with Eric and Monica as we continue our discussion around energy efficiency. And as we're closing, I want two questions I have for the both of you. One is around technology and innovation. I know there's a lot going on. Is there anything you can share about innovative things that are coming down the pike that that our listeners might be interested in uh, in this area of energy efficiency? Well, things are starting to have continued to get better and better as time goes on. As I mentioned earlier with the LED lighting, um, that's something that's just getting um, more, there's more and more opportunities, different types of fixtures that's available out there. But in the HVAC world, a lot of uh, customers residentially are starting to see where our programmable thermostats are smarter. They're starting to think a little bit more. I'm not sure if anyone's heard of um, different types of thermostats that can gauge when you're coming home, when you're not there. Those are some of the things, some of the ways that technology is heading to be able to do a lot of that stuff automatically for you so you're not having to do it. It's, it's an energy manager system, management system for your HVAC system. That's where we're headed. That's We've always been there, but it's getting better. Energy management system Yes, that connects all all the pieces together where you can operate, obviously, remotely, whether you're there or not. That's right. Oh, wow. That's right. And it gets smarter and smarter. And that's where technology is going. Um, we've always had it. Usually it was someone in an office that managed that system. Now it's going to that place where it is thinking for itself. It's realizing. It's centrally controlled. That. That's right. I was having a discussion with someone about the school system. All of their any, all of their thermostats are managed centrally in another location. Absolutely. They can also access those from their phone devices. And they're not having to be at a computer that makes them a lot more flexible and be a, a little more remote and handle things a lot easier so that's where we're headed where we are and it's getting better and better every year and with our program i would say that we're considering that as well as we see technology change you're seeing more advanced lighting controls mm-hmm. that we're trying to determine how can we pay on those thermostats are changing our program originally currently pays for programmable thermostats but we're looking at possibly a separate category for the smart Wi-Fi thermostats. So as new technology is introduced and we see that there is energy savings associated with us with that, then we are definitely taking a look at how we can capture that savings, quantify it, and ultimately pay some sort of rebate to customers on it. So it's kind of a partnership with what customers bring to us as well as what the contractors that are installing the equipment, what they're seeing as well. You know, as I think about this, because it, it, energy efficiency, this in this whole energy space is really hot. And so that says there's opportunity there potentially. And so is there an opportunity for suppliers to enter this space? Uh, is that something that's, that you think is, is, is a viable place for new suppliers? 
For us, I would definitely say yes. Again, we have what we call our trade ally program, where contractors who are doing the work, installing the equipment, can partner with us if they work with the customers, helping them identify the measures, helping them apply, then we actually list those contractors on our website where a customer can search by zip code. In other words, if they're looking to install HVAC equipment, they can go to our website, put in HVAC, put in the zip code where they're wanting to do the work, and a list of contractors that do the work in that area would come up. So there's always opportunities for um, contractors, suppliers to work with us through our Trade Ally program. And even beyond, if they're just trying to figure out ways to learn more about what the offerings are, we work with distributors, suppliers, contractors, um, just all levels in order to help educate everyone on what we're doing with our program. Excellent. I want to thank both both of you for joining us today. Monica Pearson, Eric Swan uh, of Georgia Power for being a part of our discussion and celebrating Energy Efficiency Month. I'm sure our listeners will get lots of value and tips and techniques from what you share today. I want to thank you, our listeners, for being a part of this edition of Let's Talk Small Business, for without you, this would not be possible. I want to thank our sponsors, Georgia Power, a Southern Company, AT&T, Wells Fargo, and the Cox family of companies. Again, thanks for listening to this edition of Let's Talk Small Business. Stay tuned. We'll see you next time. Every marching band play my song And every choir sing along But maybe we can, maybe we can change the world If we start turning around Lend a hand if we stop playing down and take a stand.